Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, in this section, uh, we are going to talk about the traditions of men versus the Word of God. This is a big deal. And so one of our values is we believe that the Bible is authoritative. It's God's Word. It's all we need. It's not all He knows, but it's all we need to know. And uh, He's given us His Word. It's alive. It's powerful. When the Holy Spirit illuminates things in it to us, it is amazing uh, how awesome God's word is. And so we put that first, not just our traditions. And so I might step on some toes here. Uh, I know that I've stepped on my own toes here once in a while as we have to do a check and find out if we are doing something biblically or it's just according to tradition. So uh, in Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 6, we see this. Jesus replied, and he's talking to the Pharisees and the religious people. So that's kind of us. It's the religious people. He said, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. So he's specifically talking to people who are teachers, uh, teaching God's word. He said, for you ignore God's law and substitute your own traditions. Then he said, you skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own tradition. Then he gives an example here. He says, for instance, Moses gave you this law from God, honor your father and mother. That's the law. That's the most important one, honor your father and mother. And um, anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. Wow, that's a big deal. But you say... It's all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give God what I would have given to you. And so what he's saying is that you're supposed to honor your father and mother, and you're supposed to also take care of your parents. That includes taking care of your parents. But they had promised to give something to the temple, and they said, sorry, mom, sorry, dad, I can't help you out. I have to give this to the temple. And he goes, uh, both of those are important, but the greater one is honoring your father and mother. You violate God's word just to keep keep that own thing there. And he goes, uh, in this way, you let them disregard their needy parents. And so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. And this is only one example among many others. So Jesus is really upset at them about uh, having traditions that are so important. And so... Um, just a few a few things about this is that uh, there's a lot of things we do, especially in, in Western culture where we are, but uh, it's all around the world, actually. People start to put traditions in. And you'll hear things like, oh, no, we always do it that way. Or, oh, no, you're supposed to do that way, it that way. Well, if it's in God's word, sure. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Yeah, we are commanded to meet together. Sing unto the Lord, and we're commanded to sing uh, before him uh, these things. But it doesn't say we have to meet at 10 a.m. Uh, on Sunday morning or 7.30 on Saturday evening. Or it doesn't say that we have to wear a certain kind of clothes to church and things like that. And those are traditions that they could be good uh, traditions. They could be great traditions, but they, they're not higher than the word of God. And uh, we have we have a tough time in America um, with this because um, America, I, I think America is a great country. And I'm so privileged to be in this nation, to be an American and uh, to be uh, in the in the Western world where it's unprecedented how blessed we are and how privileged we are, uh, all of us here in this nation. So, uh, for example, when I was a kid, all the men in church would wear suits and ties doesn't say that in the Bible. Some people have a strong conviction that that honors God. And, and uh, we, why wouldn't we want to wear our best? And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not in the Bible. And so we want to be very careful in there. And so I have some friends who work in, in Africa and uh, plant churches and so forth, train up locals and, and advancing the kingdom there. And I, I have a friend who asked a guy once, why, why don't you come to church on Sunday? And the guy goes, oh, he goes, I can't afford to go to church. 
And he goes, what do you mean? You can't afford to go to church. He goes, well, I don't have a suit and tie. He goes, you don't have to have a suit and tie. He goes, oh yeah, oh yeah, you do. So um, he went and spoke to some of the leaders and says, um, you're creating something that's not in the Bible. First of all, it's like 100 degrees here and 100% humidity. And you want people to wear long sleeve suit and a tie around their neck? It's just, that's inconceivable. But we've, we've made that a tradition and placed it above the word of God. And so we have some things in America um, that we, we've done that. And, and we, we give uh, people titles for things that are not in the Bible. In fact, Jesus said, don't, don't call people by titles. Um, call them, you know, your brother. And don't even call people teachers and, and, and so forth. And, and we bestow these titles on and that's that's traditions because oh we we want to um, uh, show respect so at Westside you may have heard already that I ask people please don't call me Pastor Steve I am pas a pastor and my name is Steve but pastor is not a title it's just like if I was a plumber you wouldn't say hi plumber Bob you would say hey Bob who's a plumber you know or you might not even say who's a plumber you just say hey Bob. And so um, that's a tradition that goes against the grain of a lot of Americans because this is the land of the free and the home of the brave and we don't like to be told what to do. And I, I know very well what that means. <laughs> and so if you're honest with yourself as a believer, we sometimes put America above the Bible or above the kingdom of God. And so this is a big deal. And this is something that we, we want to check. The Bible is the highest authority. And we, we don't want to be like um, people that disregard the word of God for traditions. You know, you know um, Martin Luther, the great reformer, and uh, John Wesley and Charles Spurgeon, those guys each lived about 100 years apart from each other. And they were great men in, in the history of the church. But they had very different theologies. They loved Jesus and they loved God's word, but they thought about things way differently. But you know what they did uh, uh, agree on? They all said that musical instruments in church were of the devil. They did not allow any pianos or organs or any instruments whatsoever in their churches. And the Bible doesn't say that. In fact, the Bible says, you know, make all kinds of noise, joyful noise and with flute and harp and, and, and uh, tambourines and, you know, just all these kind of things. And, uh, but we've made it traditions and we've made those more important. So, you know what the number one most sung song in, a, in American funerals is? I Did It My Way by Frank Sinatra. And we have this proud, independent spirit in America, westward ho, and let's, let's uh, move into unknown regions and so forth. And uh, that, that's a great at, uh, attribute of who we are as a nation. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, we need to say, uh, God, you're in charge. Jesus, this is your kingdom. And when we have a kingdom, we have a king. And when we have a king, we're not him. We're subjects of the king. And we, when we say yes to Jesus, we've literally laid down our life and we bowed our knee, bent our knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so we don't ever want to have things that are traditions that we uh, uh, put those above the word of God. My dad was a pastor. He loved God. He wanted to tell people about Jesus everywhere. But if he walked into Westside today, he would freak out. We have drums and we have guitars and bass and, and key, electric keyboards and all kinds of stuff. And he goes, no, no, you have to have a piano and organ. That's it. Because that's holy. No, it's not. It's just his tradition. And some of the songs we sing, uh, we, we, um, start worshiping the music or worshiping the songs more than worshiping the one that it's about or the types of buildings we have or the chairs you know some churches i've heard over the years that have uh, gotten in big trouble because they split over the color of the carpet the new carpet that's coming in or they have committees and they vote on the color of the chairs and and uh that's that's just a horrible thing there's the story told of chuck smith who uh, during the Jesus movement, he started having hippies come into the church and the people in the church didn't like it. They had just put new carpet in. And he goes, they're coming in barefoot and the church carpet's getting dirty. And so Chuck Smith famously, he said, well, take the carpet out. So the next Sunday they had a cement floor. He goes, these kids are coming in because they love Jesus. 
and we we must put uh, the word of God higher than uh, our tradition. So there's things uh, in the Bible that are biblical. We're going to follow those. There's things that are that are unbiblical, and we will make sure we don't do those. But there's a whole lot of stuff that's abiblical, which means it's not in the Bible. So we have to go to God in fear and trembling on our knees and say, God, what are you telling us about these kind of things? And so we are a church. By the way, the Bible says that there is a Holy Spirit. We believe that the Holy Spirit's work is today and it's present and it's ongoing. We believe in the gifts of the, the Spirit. We've seen miracles and healings in our church. And, and uh, there was a series that we did in August of 2020. You can go get it. It's a four or five part series. And we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, things like that. So you want to get those. And so we, we don't want to go overboard. We don't just have a style and, and be uh, weirdos uh, on purpose. But we do want to be wild for Jesus. We want to be wild for and passionate about Jesus. And so we, we want to have all kinds of generations in our churches. Grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, babies, unborn. They're all part of our, our church uh, different ethnicities and, and so forth. So we want to make sure that we are uh, putting the word of God uh, at the highest. Paul said this um, in 1 Corinthians 9, 22. He said, To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. Amen. We really want to put God's word at the highest pinnacle. Amen. Thanks, you guys.